Good morning, everyone. We couldn't resist going live a little bit early because we found some wild dogs, thanks to some of your reports that they were seen at the dam cam about 15 minutes ago. And isn't this wonderful? And welcome to everyone who is joining us on some other platforms on this unscheduled broadcast. These are such rare animals that we couldn't resist, like I say. My name's Scott. Let's get a little bit closer. You'll be glad to know James in one of our other vehicles is also joining us in this sighting. Because these animals move so quickly, we thought it would make sense to put two vehicles into this sighting so that we get as much of a chance as possible to stay with them. Now, sadly, they are on our northern boundary and they have been moving north. So I don't think we are going to be able to stay with them if they cross over to the right hand side. And let's send you across to James, who's got some great views of them approaching him. Good morning everybody. Can you believe it? Before the sun has come up here, we sit in the Greater Kruger National Park. There's Scott, you've just met him. My name is James Hendry, but most importantly, there is a pack of wild dogs heading towards us. It's marvellous and very exciting. Please send us any questions that you have during the course of this little broadcast. We will do our best to answer them. And hopefully, what will happen is that these dogs will go on the hunt with us. Now, unfortunately, if they go, do go to the left-hand side of your screen, that will mean that we cannot follow them. That is into its reserve that we can't head into. But quite often what they do is they do these little forays off the road and then back onto the road. They like using the road. It's easy for them to travel on in much the same way as it's easy for us to travel on the road. There, just like that. There are a few now coming towards us on the left-hand side of your screen, so to the north of where we are now. And so they're moving in sort of two parallel lines. And what they're aiming to do is flush any potential prey. Could be something as small as a scrub hare, which is basically like a largish rabbit, or something much bigger, like an impala. Tends to be the limit of their prey here, size-wise. They are magnificent creatures, these painted wolves of Africa. They are my favorite animal. People often ask why they're your favorite animal, and I think it's because of their almost human egalitarianism. They look after their injured and their sick. This looks like a youngster to me. George, you are clearly quite clued up. I'm just going to talk more quietly while they come past. You can see they're just giving us a bit of a look. You say, is it true that they are to the north as well? Um, you say, is it true that they, many of them die of disease? Yes, they do. They are quite badly affected by canine distemper and rabies, both of which they get from domestic dogs. And they get them from domestic dogs because, of course, most conservation areas in Africa are surrounded by local people who eke out a living in the rural areas and their domestic dogs come into contact with these dogs. And although they cannot interbreed with each other, they do carry the same sorts of diseases. So they, you know, they carry very similar genetics in many ways. In the same way that we, of course, can give diseases to the great apes. Now, Oscar, no, I don't think it was. You say, was that the alpha male? There, you see this collared individual here. This chap's got a collar on him. Normally, they collar the alpha male. I don't know this pack well. So, that is a research collar. And this is most likely the male that's been identified as the alpha. They put it on the alpha, of course, because he's not going to disperse from the pack. He's going to stay in the pack. I'm just going to be very quiet as this young male walks past us. There we go. Isn't that wonderful? No more than two meters away. I'm just going to wait for them to move here. Crystal, you say you love their ears. I love their ears too. Now what we need to do is just decide whether or not they're going to go down the road or head north into this reserve where we can't go. But what we'll do is try and follow parallel down the road with them, but I think that's going to be it, I'm afraid, everybody. No, 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 there's some popping out onto the road. That's very exciting. 
So we'll just keep on following them because what they could do is start hunting. Oh, excuse me. It's all turning around here. If something pops out onto the road, well, then we'll have a nice view of them chasing. This one is now doing his morning ablutions, uh, which of course is not something anyone should have to see at this time of the morning. Sal, of all the animals out here, they probably get disturbed by our vehicles the least. And that's because they are not stalking predators, they are coursing predators, which means that they don't need stealth, they don't use stealth. And so, while we might disturb, say, a, I'm not going to stop over here because this is just simply disgusting. Uh, while they, you know, we might disturb a leopard or lion hunt if we weren't very careful because they're stalkers through the bush there. They're just heading into the north. I think that's going to be the last view of them we have, I'm afraid. That's very sad. Oh, well. Very nice to see them. These chaps do not use any kind of stealth, and so, you know, for us to be following them in a vehicle really doesn't make a huge difference at all. All right, that's going to be it from this little broad.